Uh, so I'll be presenting today on immunoglobulin G4 related disease masquerading as a metastatic malignant melanoma of the choroid. I do not have any financial interest to disclose. So IgG4 related disease is an immune mediated fiber inflammatory condition and is known to have a very diverse range of clinical presentations involving single or multiple organs. It can occasionally mask masquerade neoplasms and often poses you know, diagnostic difficulties for the treating clinician. So uh, here I'll be presenting the clinical radiological and histopathological findings of a patient who came to us as a case of suspected choroidal melanoma. Uh, no, so we had a 18 year old female who came to us with gradually uh, progressive and painful loss of vision in the right eye for two months. Upon examination, there was no light perception in the right eye. The left eye by, was six by six. And uh, in the right eye, there was ciliary condition, irregularly deep anterior chamber, pigments on the endothelium, and a grade four vitritis, which precluded any fundus examination. In the left eye, the findings were rather unremarkable. Uh, this, uh, so we went for an ultrasound B scan, which was suggestive of an intraocular lesion with heterogeneous echogenicity in the nasal part of the right lobe. Uh, so further, we went for an MRI on suspecting uh, neoplasm, and what we saw was an intraocular lesion about 1.6 into 1.6 centimeters on the inferior medial part of the right lobe, which was hyper intense on T1-weighted imaging with a, heter sorry, with a heterogeneous post-contrast enhancement and hypointense on T2-weighted imaging. So provisionally, it was diagnosed to be case of malignant melanoma of the choroid, and the patient was advised uh, general systemic evaluation to rule out any metastasis. So when we went for systemic evaluation, we could see that there were areas of lung consolidation on chest CT. And uh, on uh, after that, uh, a PET scan was also sought. And we could see that these areas of consolidation were metabolically active on 18FDG PET. Along with that, mediastinal lymph nodes also shown uh, was suggestive of increased uptake of 18FDG on PET CT. So it was recommended that the patient should get a lung biopsy and probably uh, the mediastinal lymph nodes could be uh, studied histopathologically, which was not feasible at that point of time. So because it was a very painful and blind eye of the patient and the patient consented, so an enucleation was done. And histopathological examination showed us inflammatory infiltration reaching up to the ciliary body with plasma cell infiltration and immunohistochemical... <laughs> stain showed clusters of IgG4 secreting plasma cells greater than 50 cells per high power field. So uh, after that, we uh, asked uh, to get uh, serum IgG4 levels, which were found to be raised, and it was finally diagnosed to be a case of immunoglobulin G4-related disease. A medicine consultation was sought, and the patient was started on oral prednisolone initially at a high dose, which was later tapered to a maintenance dose of five milligram per day. And remission, the patient was in a state of remission till last seen. Now, this particular case is important because it gives us two basic uh, things that we should keep in mind when seeing such patients. First of all, an IgG4 related disease can masquerade malignant melanoma and metabolically active areas that are seen on PET CT whenever we are systemically evaluating a malignancy. One should always keep that they are alternative causes of increased metabolic activity and they should also be considered in the differential diagnosis. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Dr. Samri. Was there left eye any involvement? Was there? Uh, no, sir. Involvement? The, the examination of the left eye was rather unremarkable and uh, uh, they, they, there wasn't I mean, either any sign of inflammation in the left eye, either in the fundus or in that, in the other way. Follow the patient carefully, okay? There may be a recurrence in the left eye, okay? Only eye, there may be a recurrence after years, okay? Please make a close follow-up on the patient, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, nice presentation. Somebody, uh, how did they conclude that the patient had a resolution of disease? Uh, sir, Sorry, she how was did being. Uh, that the patient's disease had was in advance? Uh, sir, uh, uh, the um, the patient was being followed up in the Department of Medicine, and uh, they did get a repeat uh, chest scans done. I do not have the films at present, but. Uh, 
the she re- continued to remain asymptomatically no respiratory or lung uh, features were seen and on repeat ct there was a uh, 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 resolution of uh, the lung lesions that was seen how much of the resolution was there that's important was it affected uh, i do not have the images ma'am i'm sorry dr samreen uh... did the ultrasound b scan finding also suggest a you melanoma or was there any anomaly in the b scan findings because we did not see the b scan uh, yes sir b scan there was a, a heterogeneous echogenicity in the b scan and at that point of time it was a, more likely to be a, a melanoma over there again one learning point for the future like the one in the previous presentation also one of the previous presentation whenever you are presenting a case a very interesting and a very rare pathology that you are demonstrating it would be better to completely document the case first and put up all the uh, slides all the images uh, before we go for a presentation thank you otherwise interesting case thank you sir thank you sameen now uh...